Hello everyone, this is Mumbo, and welcome back to another episode of the Hermit's Craft Server. It is episode 98, and... <laughs> oh man, that intro was rough. As you can probably tell, my voice is a little bit all over the place at the minute. If you're wondering why there wasn't a Hermit Craft episode in its regularly scheduled time of Friday, it's simply because I was totally unable to record. I've been unable to record for the past couple days now. Uh, I've basically just been in bed, <laughs> just kind of resting up. Uh, I got hit by some form of crazy cold flu type thing. And yeah, I was put completely out of action. Now I'm, I'm kind of on the tail end of it. Believe it or not, this is better than it was over the past couple days. So hopefully it will improve from this point forth and I should be back to my normal health. But I do apologize for the slightly husky voice that I have right here. Who knows, some of you might quite like it. It's like, I don't know, like I'm a, a seasoned jazz singer or something. Anyway, as you guys know, in the previous episode of Hermitcraft, we built this thing, the underwater ship, which you can't really see at this point in time because we didn't actually light it up at all. So, project number one is to make sure that this thing is looking cool, and I don't think we should use sea lanterns. I think we should use glowstone, and I'm fairly certain we don't actually have any of that stuff. Also, just as I'm putting back all of this wood right here, I wanna say, please do continue to suggest things that I should do for episode 100. I have a few ideas, but you guys are incredibly creative and you often come up with some really cool stuff. So let me know down in the comment section. So that has been successful. I have managed to find some glowstone. I've managed to get my way up here and hopefully, <laughs> I'm not very good at this sort of thing, hopefully, that should be enough. 49. I imagine that'll be perfect. Okay, now I have to find my way home. I think it's somewhere over here. I'm fairly certain it's somewhere over here. I can see some... Yes, I can see some of that, so I think I think we're on the right track. And just as a heads up for the rest of this Hermitcraft episode, yes, I am going to be voice cracking quite a bit, and yes, I am going to be leaving all of them in. So expect to hear plenty more voice crack action. Right, I would say we're just about done. We need just one more in there, I would say. That will light up that side. Uh, I've placed in glowstone around pretty much every single other area, so let's just quickly pop inside here so that we don't die. That's, that's quite handy. And let's pop up to the surface and actually see what this thing looks like now that we have some lights in it. And spin around. You still can't really see it. But it is much more noticeable. And it looks quite a lot cooler. And obviously, once you're underwater, it looks really, really cool. Now it definitely looks like a ship. And it's definitely visible. We're not losing all of the details. You can see all of the details now. We've got the glowstone going through it. It might just be an idea to place in a little bit of glowstone up in the mast. I know that might seem a little bit strange, but I feel like we need to light this thing up just a tiny bit. Awesome, that looks much better. We can see the mast, it looks pretty cool. It's hidden away, it's still not that obvious, which is actually kind of what I wanted with this thing. But that looks, that looks great. That looks seriously, seriously great. Okay, now we need to actually hook it up into the base so that I can get inside this thing. So the entrance to this place is going to be going at the back of the aquarium, which actually reminds me, there's still a whole bunch of work to be done here. We've got, we've got one empty area there that's got nothing in it, and we also have one over here. But I'm kind of thinking, I mean, dolphins are going to be added in the new update. I feel like having some dolphins, I don't know how we could catch them, I don't know if we even will be able to catch them, but if we could, they would be good things to have inside these areas. Dolphins aside, this thing is now done. We have got one very long tunnel that runs all the way across like this, and then it hooks off to the left eventually. It's going to be filled with mobs because none of this is lit up and all of the caves around us are lit up. But yeah, it goes around here and then there is the aquarium over there. So this is, I mean, it's pretty huge. This is what reminds you how big the base is because I mined out this entire area without any form of haste to beacon and it's taken quite a long time. <laughs> uh, it has taken quite a long time. But anyway, we've made it all the way over here. Once we get off into this section, this is pretty much directly underneath the ship. So the ship is just above us right here. But first, I think I want to light up this place and also get rid of all the dirt and all of the coal. And I think I'm going to do a bit of a throwback to Hermitcraft Series 3. Yeah, Hermitcraft Series 3, the Great Rail Project. We're going to do that design. Now, obviously, because this tunnel's quite long, I've decided to do a bit of an ice track. So underneath these stone slabs, you can see we've got the packed ice. And for those of you who don't know, 
if you place stone slabs or any form of slab on top of the packed ice, you still feel the effect of it. So you can see I kind of slide along like this. That's because the ice is actually working, you just can't see it, which I think is a much better looking system. And that means that we can create this two block high gap right here, which we can run and jump through and it's all incredibly quick. We can absolutely fly on through, which is pretty awesome. And then as far as the design is concerned, stone slabs, sea lanterns, eight block gap, stone slabs, and then the sea lanterns making their way around. Now you may notice that the reason that this thing looks quite cool and quite clean is because we've gotten rid of all of the ugly blocks. We don't have any ores, we don't have any andesite, diorite, or granite, or anything like that. We are literally just smooth stone all the way. I've done all of it for this area, the right hand side after the corner is still really ugly, but I'll fix that when I come to it. Now I thought it would probably be a good idea to do all of the lighting first so that I don't have to deal with monsters as I'm making my way through. But we are almost there, just the final bits of stone. So that needs to be stone, and this needs to be stone, and I think that should be it. There's a tiny bit of iron left in the ceiling there, so let's quickly get rid of that. But there we go! One completely smooth area. Oh, and gravel. Apparently I just, I seem to, I, <laughs> you kind of go blind to the different things. It's really strange. But anyway, regardless of that, this thing is now fully completed. So we have got our ice tunnel. The only thing that really affects that is my Elytra kicking in, but you can see this is working perfectly. And then on the corners, I've actually removed the ice so that we can make that corner nice and easily. But there we go right the way up to the end. Okay, that's functional. Now, I think I said at the start I wanted to do a 3x3 door right at the beginning of the tunnel. I was, I kind of thought about it, and I wasn't going to do it, but I actually think it all look really cool, so let's do this. I can't help but feel like my voice is getting worse. It definitely seems like it's getting worse. Maybe I might have come back a day too early. Anyway, doors-wise, I was thinking something like this originally, but then I thought to myself, maybe we want something just a tiny bit fancier. Now I'm gonna have to go on a hunt for this one. Three by three spiral door. You guys know it. It's probably one of my favorite piston doors I've ever built. I think it's also one of the most popular piston doors I've ever built. I, I can't actually quite remember, but I'm fairly certain this thing has got quite a large number of views and I can understand why. It is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous and not that big. Three blocks wide, not too, not too deep. I mean, it's it's a cool looking thing. Right, let's gather up some resources. So, I do believe part one is now all completed. Let's just pop over here, and if we flick this lever, we should see there is the double block retraction, and then there is the double block extension. Now, for those of you who are familiar with three by three piston doors, this is the tricky part. This is the tricky part, that's all done. We've got the double piston extender circuit and also the double piston retraction. So now we need to start work on the actual spiral sequence, which surprisingly enough is actually relatively easy. It's just a few redstone torch towers and some repeaters and everything like that, just kind of wrapping their way around and doing all of the pistons. God, my voice, what is going on? I have to say, I didn't actually realize I had finished this thing, but I think I might have finished this thing. Let's try and locate our lever. I cannot remember where it is. I think it's somewhere around here. Right, if we flick it... That looked pretty promising, but it's quite difficult to tell with where our lever is placed. Hang on, let's just quickly move this thing. So redstone, let's place in some blocks up here. Right, this should be just a tiny bit better. So if we flick the lever now... Okay, that's a little bit late. It's better. I still think that's two ticks behind though, let's see. No. All right, so that should be it. One full spiral piston door, all done and dusted. Looking really, really cool. Absolutely love it. One of my favorites, as I say, and I think as far as the design is concerned, sea lantern in the center, the rest is going to be stone slabs. You guys know how I roll. And just as a final note about the piston door, I have now hooked it up so that we have this pulse extender. So we've got the button that extends it, and we can just open this thing up and leave this place and then it will close up behind us and then the same thing goes for this area here. That's all looking good. Okay, I can cover up this hole. Do I have do I have anything that can cover up this hole? I'm guessing I can use that to sea lantern. So that looks pretty cool. All right, now it's time to move on to the interior of the ship. We actually need to start work on my house. But before we do that, I think it's about time that I go AFK overnight. Uh, my voice seems to have gotten gradually worse throughout the day, so I think it's I think it's probably about time that I take some form of rest 
and chill out for a little while and then I'll be able to come back tomorrow morning hopefully fresh as a daisy that would be brilliant if I can come back fresh as a daisy then I'll be extremely happy let's just place this inside here and I'm just gonna put myself here because right now we are running low I never thought I'd say this well we were we're running like slightly low on the prismarine stuff I feel like it's worth getting some more and for once, I've been able to stay AFK overnight. Now, as you can probably tell, my voice is a tiny bit better than it was yesterday. It's still a little bit rough around the edges, but it's definitely an improvement. Yesterday, it really was just a struggle to even be able to speak. I definitely started recording a little bit too early after taking that break. But we are back online, and we seem to have a whole ton more Prismarine. That's the important thing. We go through Prismarine incredibly quickly in this base. Obviously, all the projects are absolutely massive. So that means that we have got, well, we've got large areas and large amounts of prismarine required. So thankfully, all of these chests are now filled. And we are also, as a side note, completely surrounded by slime. Can you hear them? There's hundreds of them. Anyway, plan number one for a little project right here in terms of clearing out this space and actually creating some form of living area. We need to get the sponges out and make sure that all of the water is gone. Now, I guess the first thing that I should probably do is make sure that this thing is watertight because otherwise I'm going to be at it for quite some time. If water just keeps flowing in from the rest of the ocean, then this is going to take quite a while to clear. So this is what we've got so far. I have taken out all the water using the sponges and now I'm in the process of mining out some of the stone. And to be honest with you, I don't really know how far down to go. How big do I actually want this place? I mean, I'd like it to be a decent sized living area, but we don't want like another aquarium project that's just absolutely massive. I want this to be like a small kind of cozy place, maybe with a fireplace, you know, that sort of thing going on. So not too much bigger than this. Now I was thinking something along the lines of this. We've got spruce wood pillars going all the way around the outside. And then I thought in these gap areas here, we can actually have some hardened clay. I don't think I've really used hardened clay at all so far in this hermit craft season. So I'm probably gonna have to go out and grab some and we can see what that looks like in between the gaps. Right, how does this look then? Yeah, it looks pretty cool. It, it looks pretty good. Very, very homely, I would say. Each one of these is five blocks apart. Didn't really know what to do up at this end, so I, I've kind of done something quite temporary at this point in time. But it looks cool so far. Now, don't worry, this isn't going to be the ceiling. We're not going to be living like this. Uh, instead, what I thought we could do is, well, see, originally I was thinking spruce wood stairs. But now that I've looked at it, I actually think some dark wood stairs there and then maybe some spruce wood slabs making their way round, and then a different colored block for the ceiling. Something completely different, be it, I don't know, stone bricks or something like that, just to put a roof on top of this thing. And then as I say, we can work out what we're going to be doing in this section later on. I do also want to extend out a massive thank you to those of you who are still watching this video despite my horrible croaky voice. Uh, I, I'm hoping it will get better by the next episode of Hermitcraft. I, I hope you're still enjoying it despite, despite this mess. Now that we have the whole ceiling in place, everything is starting to come together very nicely. I'm just experimenting with something here which is placing in some of this dark oak stuff down on the floor. I really like dark oak wood. Okay, I've never really used it too much in Minecraft before. And I have to say, it looks so cool. That looks good. I think. I think it looks good. <laughs> I don't really know. It's quite difficult to tell. I've been playing a lot of Minecraft today. And also, I've got a bit of a muddied brain by the fact that it's it's just, it's full of... Well, it's full of gunk, essentially. Not that I want to go into too much detail there. But yeah, I'm not feeling the freshest. So I think maybe placing in some spruce wood around the edges here and then just basically replicating the ceiling in the floor. I think that's probably the way to go. I can't think of a better way to do it unless I want to use something like stone bricks. Now, I always use stone bricks. I always use stone slabs. Let's make this entirely out of wood. I definitely think I need to drop this down. Originally, I wasn't going to place in, I wasn't going to have this dip, but no, that looks stupid. Yeah, that doesn't look very good. Okay, let's drop this down by half a block. This is just a bit of a rough draft, but I just thought for this area, I would literally just extend up from where these stairs go, upwards with hardened clay, and then it can just be a little area that you can go up into to get up to that door there. Oh, and I've dropped the floor down as well. It looks really good. In fact, having this depth as well of this just extra platform up here is really improving things. 
I'm liking it. It looks very grand. Very, very grand. So just as I was finishing everything up in here, placing in all the beds, doing all the hardened clay, thinking to myself, this has gone really well. I realise that I have not thought about where the tunnel is going to be coming in. I totally forgot that we'd even done the tunnel. So we need to work this out. I don't even know where the tunnel goes to. I suppose I should I should mine it up so we can find out where we're going to be coming through and then try and work around it. Oh, that's it's gonna be difficult. This feels like a stupid idea. But you know what? It worked out decently okay. Only half my health lost. Ooh, that was not a good idea though, to jump down with no health left. That was very close, and I told you, didn't I say earlier on in the episode or in the previous episode, I was definitely going to die. I've got the wrong boots on, no feather falling. That should solve the issue that I had with the things not matching up, not knowing where the tunnel is going to come through, because if we hit this button right here, that will retract this staircase out of the way, and then it will push it back, and you wouldn't even know the tunnel was there. Okay, now all we have to do is hook up some form of button into this thing, which shouldn't be too difficult, and then that really will be this room completed. Which it now is, just as some thunder strikes. So this is the entrance into the other tunnel, that will drop us down there, very nice and easy. It kind of reminds me of the old days of Minecraft, you know, when you would have things like this lying around. You just used to have secret entrances down into little tunnels and things. Very, very cool. This place is looking nice as well. Extremely happy with it. Now what I want to do is pop into my redstone testing world and just do a little bit of work on the tree farm that I'm going to be building in the near future. So the tree farm itself is going to be based off of this design over here that we have that's been, well, it's been staying strong for I think maybe three years now. We're going to be building, the main bulk of it is going to be this thing. So this is like the tree processing plant type area. So when the tree grows, it will all be pushed across, pushed across here and then go into some form of catchment chamber. Uh, I know a lot of you have been asking me to build a wither powered tree farm. I would like to build a wither powered tree farm. I just don't want to build one in my base, so who knows, in this Hermitcraft season, I might end up building one, I may end up building one at some point, but it's not going to be in the base, it's going to be somewhere far away, so that if it all goes wrong, and the weather escapes, I don't have to worry about my entire base being destroyed, because that would be extremely upsetting. So as I say, this is, this is the little module that we're going to be constructing, but what I want to do is to make sure that everything stays symmetrical, I want to make it so that when the wood comes out of this thing, it gets split off in two directions. Because of course we have the diamonds, so the iron farm is going to be over in this direction over here. And then we're going to have the tree farm at the front end of the diamond, the wood's going to come out like this, and then it's going to split up on either side of the iron farm, and it's going to make its way into big blocks on either side. So I have to work out a way to do that. And rather hilariously, I think straight away I have just come up with a solution that I imagine is probably going to work quite nicely. Sometimes, you know when you, your brain just goes, oh yeah, I know how to do that, and straight away does it, I think this could potentially work. So, the idea is pretty plain and simple. We have got a lot of pistons here, and then they're going to be pushed across by the tree farm, and they're going to get pushed across again, so this is another tree, and then when they make it over to this set of pistons here, both sets of pistons will fire, and both sets of blocks will be moved across. So there we go, and then we have space for these next ones to come in. So that will do that, and then there we go. It's splitting off, it's perfectly equal. It's a very simple way of doing things. One that I hadn't really thought, you know, originally when I was coming up with this plan, I was like, I'm gonna have to have a T flip flop system, and there's going to be one piston that's going to have to be pushed across and point this way, the one that gets pushed across and gets pointed that way, and there's some guy I'm gonna have to work it out, or I was gonna have pistons like alternating, going in opposite directions. It was gonna get a bit wacky, and I'm very glad to say that this is about as simple as it gets. That's it. Just blocks going across, and there we go. Four in each direction. Very, very nice. Okay, excellent. Well, that, that solves that one then. We've, we've worked it out. So we have it, ladies and gents. I think that just about rounds everything up for today's episode of Hermitcraft. Now, unfortunately, I cannot sleep. I cannot sleep in the bed. Uh, it's not currently nighttime, but we, we can say that I tried. I thought I was going to round up the episode with that one. But anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this jam-packed episode of Hermitcraft. It's been really fun to record. 
despite the fact that of course I am I am pretty rough around the edges at this point in time it's just been nice to get back into the swing of things back onto Hermitcraft and back into recording and I can't wait for the next couple weeks worth of content it's going to be really really exciting but if you did enjoy please sure to that like button if you really loved it then make sure to subscribe but thanks for watching guys this is Mumbo and I'm out I'll see you later oh and as per usual I mean you guys know what to do you should just check out the film check out the latest film on the filming channel link will be on the end screen Thank you.